it seems like every few months we come back to Daniel Stenberg, the creator and BDFL of Curl, ranting about the absolute mess that is CVEs. At one point, we had the whole security disclosure mailing list mess. Then, we had Windows users deleting Curl from their system because a security scanner told them it had a vulnerability. By doing so, it broke Windows Update because they tampered with their operating system. And now, we have CVE 2020 19909 is everything that is wrong with CVEs. This CVE had a score of 9.8 critical. Now, this is a scale out of 10. This is one of the most serious vulnerabilities that Curl could possibly have. At least that's what the reporting said. So on August 25th, a good Samaritan in the Curl project named Samuel Henrique posted this over onto the Curl mailing list. CV 2020 19909 possibly released without Curl's author Zach, yet another NVD critical. I wanted to let you know there's a recent Curl CV published and it doesn't look like it was acknowledged by the Curl authors since it's not mentioned in the Curl website. CV 2020 19909 and this is how it first looked when it was first reported. Integer overflow vulnerability in tool underscore operate.c in curl 7.65.2 via crafted value as the retry delay. 9.8 critical and the attack vector is pretty much as bad as it can get. So this is how the score is actually calculated. It is a network attack, so you don't have to have physical access. It is low complexity. You don't require any privileges. You don't require any special user interaction. You don't need any scope changes. And basically, it's always going to work. So as a brief glance at this issue, it looks really serious and looks like something that absolutely needs to get fixed. But there is a problem here. 2020. Now the way CVEs are made is this is the ID for the actual CVE and this is the year of the CVE. 2020. This was published in August of 2023. When you register a CVE, you typically get it with the year you request it, unless you get an ID for an old problem of the past. Is that what they did? Sources seem to indicate that this was published just days ago. So scrolling down, I spend a lot of time in the curl security team receiving reports, reviewing reports, reviewing source code, assessing claims, and figuring out curl security issues. And I had seen this claim before. So this was filed over on Hacker One by Seijun back on July 27th, 2019. In case anyone doesn't know, HackerOne is a cybersecurity platform that is often used for bug bounty programs, and it sort of gamifies the idea of tracking down and fixing security issues. As for this problem though, it's on the exact same file, and sounds at least on the surface like a very similar issue. Now in this case, the issue is really dumb and really simple. So it's a problem with curl's reach by delay command option. This option accepts a number of seconds and then internally converts it to milliseconds by multiplying the value by a thousand. The option sets how long curl should wait until it makes a retry if the previous transfer failed with a transient error. So on a 64-bit machine, if you write this number right here, the number will overflow the maths, and instead of waiting until the end of the universe, it might retry again within the next few seconds. The above example apparently made it wait 384 seconds instead. On Windows, which uses 32-bit longs, you can get the problem already by asking for more than 2 million seconds, roughly 25 days. This is obviously a bug and shouldn't happen. But a security problem... Uh, not so much. And my favourite problem is the reporter didn't know either. So Daniel asked, hey, could you elaborate on how you would use slash abuse this to make it a security problem? Sorry, at the moment I can't use this issue to cause some damage. I think it has a partial impact on the availability of this parameter. It's certainly a bug, I'm just not seeing a security angle. I can't find the idea to use this question alone. I have the idea of using it, I will inform you. Thanks. May I ask, shall we apply for CVE now, or shall we wait until the fix? At this point, like, it still wasn't confirmed it was even a security problem in the first place. Like, a CVE is not something that should be applied for here. So another member of the Curl team came in and said, if it's not a security issue as it seems with this bug, there is no case for a CVE. 
I can't see a way to exploit this bug to cause a security vulnerability. And that seems to be the case. It doesn't seem to have any security implication whatsoever. So with that, Daniel went and fixed the problem, and that should have been pretty much the end of it. The problem never needed to come back. It had been dealt with. Credits to Jason for the report. We moved on. The fix was shipped in curl 7.66.0, released in September of 2019. Now everything completely lines up. This is the exact same problem that wasn't a security vulnerability that was dealt with four years ago already. Now the CVE does actually link to the GitHub patch, so it is pretty obvious they are connected, but having this additional confirmation makes it absolutely certain. Now, assuming this was actually a security issue, it's not a big deal that it's now in the CVE database. Even though the problem has been fixed, there may be systems out there still running a version of curl from four years ago. So even though this is a problem that has been dealt with, it should be in the database. The problem is it's not a security issue, and the problem is it's been given a 9.8% critical rating. In previous attempts from me to reason with NVD and stop their scaremongering and their grossly inflating the severity level of issues, they've insisted they take in all publicly available data about the problem and make an assessment. It was obvious already before that NVD really does not try very hard to understand or figure out the problem they grade. In this case, it is quite impossible for me to understand how they have come up with this severity level. It's like they saw integer overflow and figured that, wow, yeah, that is the most horrible flaw we can imagine. But clearly nobody at NVD engaged their brains nor looked at the vulnerable code or the patch that fixed the bug. Anyone that looks can see that this is not a security problem. It would be one thing if NVD, the National Vulnerability Database, just didn't matter. If it was just some random thing that nobody took seriously. The problem is that every security scanner and every CVE website all pull in NVD. NVD hosts a CVE database and there is an entire world and ecosystem that pulls the records from them. NVD now has the CVE 2020-1999 entry in there, rated 9.8 critical, and now this disinformation spreads across the world. Now when we search for the CVE number, we find numerous sites that repeat the same data. This is a 9.8 critical problem in curl, when it is not. So, at this stage Daniel did what any sensible person would do, complain to the manager. It is a weird system, so we can't see which CNA, CVE numbering authority, assigned the ID. Some language on the NVD site made me think it was done by MITRE itself, but I can't find any public way to contact MITRE to get a CVE rejected for any reason. MITRE... <laughs> MITRE is the organization that created the concept of CVEs. They are like the big dogs in the CVE world but he found a way to do it, and he also got a response back. The response is... less than good. After review, there are multiple perspectives on whether the issue information is helpful to consumers of the CVE list. Our current preference is in the direction of keeping the CVE ID assignment. There is a valid weakness, integer overflow, that can lead to a valid security impact. Denial of service based on retrying network traffic much more often than is documented or requested. The record has been flagged as disputed, and the views have been recorded as a note in the record as well. This request will now be closed. To make the problem happen, you need to set the retry delay longer than the end of the universe. Under what situation is that not going to set off some alarms? Sure, I guess it's a thing that could happen, but that's very much in the range of a low severity issue. And if your rating system doesn't give that low, I think you need to fix your rating system. As it did say, the CV has now been marked as disputed, so this is what the page currently looks like. Disputed, integer overflow vulnerability in tooloperate.c in curl 7.65.2 via a large value as the retry delay. Note, many parties report that this has no direct security impact on the curl user. 
the creator of the project indicates that, yes. However, it may, in theory, cause a denial of service to associated systems or networks if, for example, retry delay is misinterpreted as a much smaller value than was intended. This is not especially plausible because the overflow only happens if the user was trying to specify that curl should wait weeks or, no, not weeks, years or longer before trying to recover from a transient error. And they don't update this, so it still says the exact same thing. So even though they admit it's not really a plausible problem, it still says this. Now that page the email that Daniel got was on, this is on Curl's own write-up about the issue. And this page is, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. So we have fun things like affected versions. It does not affect any version. It is not a security problem. It was a bug that we fixed in mid-2019. Solution, relax. Use curl as usual. The curl security team will work on getting the CV rejected. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Recommendations. Do not blindly trust the CV system. It is full of cracks and bogus reports such as CV 2020-19909. I do want to give props to one organization, Canonical and Ubuntu. So like pretty much every big distro out there, they list out the CVs that affect their system. And in their report, they do include the rating that NVD gave it, but also gave it a low priority and also has these author notes. This CVE is not a security issue, and the curl author intends on disputing this issue, marking as not affected. This was added before the blog popped off, before the reply. They did this basically as soon as Daniel posted his blog. Round of applause for Canonical for actually doing a much better job than the National Vulnerability Database. So what happens now? Curl is an ongoing project. It's gonna have further problems. Some of those problems are going to be security issues and hopefully if they have CVs associated with them, they have a reasonable score. I feel like some of them probably won't, but others are going to be completely bogus and shouldn't be in the CVE database. Well, what Daniel has already started doing is applying to be a CNA, a CVE numbering authority. So these are organizations that can assign a CVE to a problem, but also they can be the only ones who can assign a CVE to a specific product. So you'll see companies like AMD, like Adobe, you'll see NVIDIA, HP, IBM, Netflix, all of these organizations run their own CNA, and they are the only ones that can assign a CVE to a problem. Now, while a CNA is often run by these proprietary companies, there are open organizations like Node.js that also have their own CNA. So, there's no reason why Curl can't have their own as well. There's no sign-up fee, pretty much it just involves doing a bunch of paperwork, verifying that you own the project, and things like that. The problem is this isn't a very scalable solution. As I said, there are 314 CNAs. I don't want to see it be that every critical project needs to run their own CNA. I would like it that the CVEs that are listed are actually reasonable and have a reasonable score. But at this stage, Daniel is just sick of it. So if he is the one assigning the CVEs and he is the one assigning the scores, at least then, he knows they are going to be reasonable. Obviously, people can then come to him and report problems like they're already doing, but at least there isn't going to be these nonsense reports that are for problems that were fixed four years ago for things that are not even security issues. I wish the best of luck for Daniel, and if you want to hear Daniel talk about this issue, in a couple of weeks, there is going to be an episode of my podcast with him as a guest, so keep your eyes out for that one. So... That's going to be pretty much it for me. Did you know about this mess with the CVE database? Have you been involved with it yourself? Are you involved in some big project, maybe run a big project, that's had these nonsense CVEs associated with it? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribes to the Verapay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And we all love curl. We definitely all love curl. Ain't time better call the bed. Ain't plan